Hello and welcome to episode 2 of the in-depth track guide for Assetto Corsa Competizione where I shall be giving you all the juicy hints and tips as to where to be braking, where to be apexing in the turns and all the detailed information that you need to know to get the in-depth knowledge and get fully up to speed on each of the tracks in the game. Now, as I'm following the 2019 calendar, episode 2 will be at Brands Hatch in the UK. The circuit's length comes to 2.43 miles, which is 3.9 kilometers, and has a total of 9 corners. Even though the circuit has a few overtaking opportunities, it is still quite difficult to actually pass here, so qualifying will be key. So with that in mind, you'll be wanting to run a high downforce setup to maximise the speed going through the corners, but also be running with soft suspension to really help soak up the bumps here around the circuit. Now, just like we did with episode one, we'll kick off this episode by taking a look at the pit entry and exit as our first port of call. So starting with the pit entry, you're going to be wanting to get hard on the brakes pretty much as soon as you come off the racing surface and into the pit lane itself because we've got a chicane to navigate. You can take a little bit off the inside at the entry to the chicane there, but you want to get the speed bled down to avoid hitting any of the walls or the barriers going through that chicane, but of course also for the pit entry speed limit line. As for the pit exit though, the disengage limiter line is pretty much right where the pit lane really narrows up between the two barriers that you can see there. And then when you accelerate out of the pit lane, you want to be staying to the right hand side of the white line that extends out onto the circuit. And you're going to be pretty much dropped straight into the apex of turn one. So do be careful when exiting the pit lane and keep an eye out for traffic. As part of that traffic approaching turn one, otherwise known as Paddock Hill Bend, you'll be wanting to get up to the left hand side of the circuit and braking roughly around here, about 70 to 80 meters before the corner. It's gonna be a pretty short braking zone into the first corner as we want to be carrying the speed in, but we want to take a nice sweeping line from the outside into our apex here just after the two pillars. You want to try and stay off the inside curb despite its slightly notchy appearance. It is quite smooth in terms of geometry, but taking the curb will bounce the car out wide. For the exit, you want to be pretty much full throttle as you come through the compression and start going uphill again. You can use the curbing on the exit and there's a piece of green painted tarmac available for you as well but do take care as dipping your wheels onto the gravel will hurt your momentum up the hill. With the braking zone into turn two being on quite a steep incline, we can actually get on the brakes quite a bit later than you would typically expect. And we'll be doing so here just before the 50 meter board shifting heavily down into first gear and pointing the car straight for our first apex. This is going to be our first pretty early on in the corner where we're going to ride the curb and let the car run a little bit deep through the mid corner and then bring it back for a second later apex for the exit. You want to avoid the curb in the middle of the corner because there's quite these large notchy bubbles on the uh, curbing itself and hitting those with the tyres will heavily unsettle the car and most likely see the car trying to break traction and spin away from you. The exit curb is serrated with some grass creek that features just beyond it. It's perfectly usable in the dry if you find yourself running out that wide. However, in the wet, you'll be wanting to avoid running this as it will cost you the traction coming off the corner. On the approach to turn three, you will need to get the car over to the right hand side and as straight as possible ready for the very short braking zone. This is it just as we come past the 50 meter board that is there and it's a short ride on the brakes as we drop down into second gear and chuck the car into the corner. Our apex is just here after this third pillar midway through on the serrated curb on the inside. You should be fine to run this curb both in the dry and also the wet conditions considering the corner is relatively low to medium speed. For your exit, however, you'll be fine to run this in the dry, but you'll be wanting to stay clear from the curb and the grass creek that's there on the exit, as that will cost you the traction. You can run pretty far out wide here as well, providing that you keep the left hand wheels on the red and white curbing. Turn 4 sees us entering into 30s and our breaking point is just after we come past this 50 meter board here and just before we get to the end of the Armco barrier that is painted 
orange. You're going to be shifting down into second gear and we'll be looking to hook up this late apex. The corner requires quite an open sweeping line coming from out wide trying to keep the car in the middle of the circuit coming through the midsection and then bringing it back in tight for this late apex as the drive off of here and out through the exit is going to be key for the long back straight. The exit curbing itself has a slight step to it but it's mostly smooth and flat however by the time that you reach this curb you'll pretty much run out of it anyway to make full use of it. One other thing to quickly just note is the fact that there's quite a big bump on the exit out here as well. You'll probably end up hitting that as you're trying to apply the power, but as long as you're wary of it and you're not applying too much steering lock, you should be fine for a good drive off the turn. Coming off the exit of turn four, we'll be heading out onto the high speed back section of the circuit where we'll be really making use of the downforce. First though, we'll come down through Pilgrim's Drop and then we'll be into the very fast right hander of turn five. Our braking point is just after the 100 meter board around this sort of mark and it's a very short braking zone where we'll just drop the car down into fourth gear and float it in towards the apex. Now the apex itself is at this point here as close to the inside curb as you can possibly get. It's very very thin and it looks quite bumpy but actually the curb itself in terms of its geometry is quite smooth and flat. The corner however is quite bumpy so do take care when running up against the curb in both the dry and wet conditions and then also when coming out through the exit. You can see the exit curb here it looks pretty wide, it is nice and flat and smooth however you will very quickly find yourself at the thin strip of exit curbing there, there's no grass creep or anything so do take care when coming off the corner. But we then very quickly come into turn 6 and our braking point is here just before the 50 meter board. We'd be braking hard, shifting down into third gear and then guiding the car in towards our apex where we'll be clipping this sawtooth curb on the inside at this point here. There's nothing too special to this corner, it's just a case of trying to maximise and carry the speed through the turn itself. And then when we come out to the exit, in the dry you can make full use of the sawtooth curbing and the piece of grass creep that lays between it and the gravel. However, you don't want to run out too wide into the gravel, nor do you want to be running out this wide in the wet conditions either. After turn 6 we go down through Dingledale and then climb back up the hill and into turn 7 Sheen Curve. This is our breaking point roughly around here just as we're coming up to the 50 meter board and we're going to be throwing the car into the right over the crest and into a blind apex at this point here. You can absolutely hammer this curve on the inside in the dry although do take caution in the wet and the key to this turn is purely flow. There is no real reference points for chucking the car in or where the apex is at that blind crest so once you get it right just try and repeat that and build the muscle memory and it will all come nicely to you. For the exit, unfortunately things are just as difficult here as trying to spot the apex of the corner. There is pretty much nothing to lean on on the exit other than a little bit of grass creep but by the time that you actually reach the track edge that grass creep is long gone so don't be dipping any wheels out wide here in neither the dry or wet conditions and instead focus on keeping it between the white lines and then bringing the car back over to the right hand side of the circuit ready for turn 8. On the approach to the penultimate corner we'll be on the right hand side of the circuit and we'll be looking for our braking point just before the 50 meter board roughly around here. You'll be braking fairly hard and fairly short shifting down through the gears into second before guiding the car in towards the apex which is going to be just shy of the inside curb. There is a lot of camber in this corner so make sure you try and get yourself down as close to that inside curb without touching it as you possibly can to give yourself the best line and best hook up off out into the exit. If possible you'll be wanting to maximise the exit whilst also trying to stay off the curb. There is a bit of a step to it, it is smooth and flat once you go up over that step but ideally you don't want to be running out quite that wide and you definitely don't want to be touching it in the wet conditions. On the run down to the final turn we have the short straight clearways where we will come up over a slight crest before dropping down into the final turn 9. 
Our final braking zone of the lap is going to be beginning just before the 50 meter board, about 60 meters before the corner. Once again, it is fairly short and we'll be shifting down into third gear and floating the car into this apex just here, just off the inside curb. The curb itself is smooth, but it is very thin. So be careful and be wary of dropping the inside wheels on the grass, which could bounce the car out wide. But you'll be wanting to try and get on the power as soon as you possibly can and making full use of the available tarmac on the exit. By the time you're coming out of the corner though, you'll be running out of rumble strips. So try and avoid dipping your wheels onto that as you do have the gravel very close and that can really upset your momentum coming off the corner to then complete the lap. So now that we've run through everything, broken it down into the braking zones and apexes, let's take a look at a lap of Brands Hatch at full flying speed. So there we have a solid lap of Brands Hatch in the McLaren 720S. Just to close this episode off, I just want to make the disclaimer that the braking points used here are going to vary depending on the car, your car setup, the track conditions and the weather conditions. So do use them as a guide, shift them appropriately. But overall, I hope this episode has helped you and given you some more in-depth knowledge about the circuit. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed or learned something new, please give it a thumbs up and share the video. Links down in the description below to my social media channels and my Discord where you can come and talk to me and the rest of the community. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing to the channel as well with the bell notification. That way you won't miss out on any future in-depth track guide episodes. Other than that though, thank you very much for watching. Until the next time, have fun, stay safe and take care.